Hello YouTube, this is Matt Wicks of the Bluebell Model Railway channel on YouTube. Uh, today I have a follow-up video on the Hornby Railroad Duke of Gloucester model. Um, as you can see at the moment it's just a white screen. But behind that screen after two to three weeks work I have actually finished uh, the revised model which uh, I've been working on for quite a while now, pretty much every single day. Um, I've done several modifications on this model and uh, I will reveal it to you now to see what you think. So here we are, this is or was the Railroad Duke of Gloucester which we started with with three weeks ago. Uh, as you can see on first appearance it looks very different. Um, mainly the paint which is very different and the lining and as well as several details. First thing you've probably spotted is it hasn't got a uh, accessory pack or a detail pack as of yet. I'm still working on that. Um, working on various other uh, alternative just in case uh, the detail pack I cannot get from the from uh, Hornby or uh, I'm looking at several other alternatives like uh, the Britannia detail pack which includes drain cocks but sadly not the steps um, so I'm still looking on or, or at different alternatives um, but I'll take you through a slightly more uh, detailed view of the uh, revised model and talk you through what I have uh, added and done. Okay, we'll start on the uh, tender of the model. Uh, firstly, I started stripping the whole thing down. Um, then I repainted it into post 54 BL green, which I think is quite dark or a little bit lighter, one of the two. Um, starting straight at the back, you can see here uh, we have sprung buffers now on the model. I'll just demonstrate that for you. There you go, sprung buffers. They have been added to the model just to uh, add a little bit more detail to it. Uh, some people don't mind, but generally I wanted to add as much detail as possible. Um, then going on to the back of the tender, uh, it has separate or separately fitted handrails which I've used I think it was 0.75mm uh, brass rod which was bent to suit. You can see here I've added them here in the middle and over on the other side. Also worth mentioning I have added the uh, electrical uh, or electric overhead wire warning stickers or transfers which are on either side of the uh, tender steps here. <coughs> um, these came off the uh, sheet 14 of HMRS press fix transfers. Um, then going onto the side of the tender I have painted the axle boxes yellow with a red band down the middle. These represent roller bearings I believe. Uh, on the side of the model I have fixed a BR late crest uh, transfer. Uh, in the in the centre of the uh, model, uh, this was then lined out with uh, press fix transfers uh, from HMRS again. Um, these have an orange with a black uh, middle, so two orange lines with black in the centre. Again, these came from uh, press fix transfers. I believe it's a Great Western uh, lining, which can also be used as BR lining. I think it's just a bit more striking and stands out a little bit more, which I think is correct for this model anyway. Um, this is quite simple to do, and overall on this area I spent probably about 2-3, to three, maybe 4 quid. Transfers were a bit more about 7 quid. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can probably add that up to about £10 so far on this end of the model. Anyway, we'll move on to the 
loco end as that's all I have done on this uh, side apart from paint and a bit of red paint I had lying around for the buffer beam which uh, I think looks a lot better now and uh, a bit more uh, less wishy-washy than it was before anyway moving on to the loco Okay, now you join me in the cab of the loco, which I showed you, I think, on the uh, review. Um, on the review, I think I just showed you a picture after I was describing it, which was pretty much just moulded black plastic. Um, I actually just recently had a special edition version here to fit some plates to it, uh, which belonged to a friend of mine. And um, to say I was quite shocked and disappointed by Hornby was uh, an understatement. On the special edition version it was also just moulded black plastic uh, which was surprising to say the least. I think I'll just zoom out of there slightly just to try and focus it a bit more. There we go. Um, but yeah it was quite shocking to see it was just moulded black plastic and not actually picked out like I have done here on this model. Uh, I've used uh, a couple of other spare paints lying around. I've used some gold acrylic paint from the Humble range. And I have uh, added some uh, copper paint to the, uh, the pipes. A bit of white paint I had lying around. And a bit of red paint just to uh, pick out the ends of the handles and the regulator handle. It took me about two or three hours uh, in, the, in the evening. I've also picked out the handrail wire at the side of the cab, which you can see at the front here, on either side. I have now painted that uh, silver, which was Hombrel silver, uh, which you can probably find in any good uh, hobby craft or uh, general art shop. Um, I removed the, uh, the glazing on the sides, uh, that was all one piece, if you get a uh, a craft knife behind it and just prise it out, it'll be okay. Um, try not to snap it like I did on the left hand side, I've had to replace some various uh, panels of glazing, not the front but the side. Um, yeah, it was took about two to three hours to paint up and, and dry uh, overnight, and I think it's generally looking a lot better, um, which isn't difficult really. It just takes a lot of concentration to uh, pick out all the pipes, etc. Uh, the way I pick out the pipes is I just basically use just a slightly blunt pencil, dip it into the uh, the paint, and then just go over the mouldings, which uh, give a nice crisp uh, finish. And it is actually nice and doesn't uh, splay it onto the surrounding uh, mouldings, uh, so the paint doesn't go everywhere which is nice and uh, I think it just uh, finished it off nicely anyway let's go on to the side of the model okay onto the side of the loco starting at the cab uh, or under the cab I should say the roller bearing has been painted so on the axle box uh, yellow with a red line down the middle as before um, the side of the cab has been painted as has the whole loco I should uh, add to the same paint which is Phoenix um, precision paints uh, post 54 green um, the lining is the Great Western lining again from HMRS Pressfix which were all bought from mainly trains um, the X numbers, they are from uh, Fox's uh, transfers, or Fox transfers, uh, which I think are near Leicester somewhere. Uh, you can buy them online. Uh, if you just type in 71,000 in the search bar, they will pop up. They're about £12.55, which takes up to about £20, £22 worth, I would say. Um, so we're about £22 into the budget of 35 um, they were fixed with some uh, acrylic varnish I had lying around 
Uh, so you just uh, stick the number on into the varnish, let it dry and it will fix it in place. I've sprayed another bit of varnish over the top to seal in the transfers. Again that was uh, uh, acrylic varnish which I will add into the uh, description below so you know where to get it from. I've generally still got that lying around so I didn't buy it. Uh, in front of the cab you can see all the pipe work has been picked out. The gold has been I would say slightly weathered down with some uh, uh, matte enamel black paint which I thinned out with enamel thinners which again I still had lying around from various other projects. Uh, you can just about see, I think the light is a bit too bright on it at the moment, if I can bend that away. Uh, you might be able to see it but I've added an electrical or overhead wire warning uh, transfer just above the uh, washout plug there. Uh, moving along the loco body, you can see I have painted the um, handrail wire all along the body. Uh, that's into silver paint as before, humbrel silver. Uh, the lining along the uh, running plate and the um, boiler barrel again is the uh, Great Western variety press fix transfers. And uh, going up to the uh, clack valve on the side of the boiler. Uh, the clack valve itself has been painted gold, uh, which I can weather down as well, with a bit of matte black paint, which I might do a little bit later. Um, the pipe going up to the clack valve has been painted with Revel copper paint. Again, that's enamel, so you can't buy that online and get it in the post anymore because of uh, Royal Mail screwing that up for all of us. Um, also you can see the bearing on the uh, Caprotti valve gear has been painted gold as well with the acrylic gold uh, paint. Um, moving to just in front of the, uh, well, well just at the back of the smoke box I should say, um, I've added a turnt brass whistle. wasn't actually going to do this, but I actually accidentally pulled off the other one. I caught it with my finger and it fell off. That's just moulded on plastic as well which is a bit disappointing um, but I drew the small hole and added a Hornby or an old Hornby turn brass whistle uh, which looks a lot nicer to be honest uh, there's been no work on the chassis in this area uh, towards the front of the smoke box um, we'll add some drain cocks eventually when I get some uh, uh, accessory pack etc um, on the smoke deflectors I have added um, handrail wire and handrail knobs and also etched nameplates which come from the same pack as the Fox transfers. Anyway I'll take you around to the front of the smoke box now. Okay, moving on to the front of the uh, smoke box. Um, it's probably worth mentioning as well, I've gone over the smoke box and running plate with a matte black uh, paint uh, from Humbrol as well, um, which I had to go and buy because I ran out of it completely. Um, you can also see the, um, uh, the smoke box uh, door plate as well, uh, that's from Fox's, the same pack. Uh, of the uh, £12.55 pack, so you get quite a lot in the pack to uh, do the loco. Um, I've also taken off the uh, moulded on smoke box door handle, um, fitted a replacement uh, which is from mainly trains as well, BR, Great Western slash something else, LNER, I think, um, which is turned brass and separately fitted and then painted silver, uh, as well as the uh, handrail on the top. Uh, I think that improves the front end a great deal. I've also added uh, some uh, handles on just underneath the smoke box, uh, which have the third cylinder uh, to get out the third cylinder. I should mention. Uh, I've also added some sprung buffers, were quite easily done. There you go, nice sprung buffers on the front there. Sorry for nudging the camera there. Um, those are from class 31, and they cost about two pounds. 
fifty or so I think from eBay or Peter Spares or, or somewhere else on eBay. Um but uh, very quite simply simple to fit. Uh just cut off the old buffer and drill a two millimeter hole in the centre and just put some glue around the end of the uh, the sprung buffer and just put it straight in and then paint over it and you will hardly notice uh, the join join line between uh, the two which uh, you know I think these sprung buffers do add quite a bit of character to the loco and look quite nice as well instead of painted silver plastic instead of, uh, instead of these nice shiny uh, metal buffers um, anyway but uh, that's generally all I've done to the front end. I haven't really done much uh, to the front. And uh, I think it just makes a big improvement really. I paint uh, the, the um, cab roof with matte black as well just to uh, just to split it up a little bit and make it look how it should look. Uh, which is just paint generally on top of uh, the metal and it just gives it a matte black and also when it's used with the soot and the dust going over it um, you know it's not going to be sat in a showroom all the time so you might as well paint it matte black I do that with uh, BR locos as well when they're all black it, it's nice to split up the uh, satin black um, a bit so just adding a bit of matte black splits that up um, but that's generally all I've done to the front of a loco and uh, I'm not sure about you but I think it looks a lot better um, you may have different opinions on what I've done but I generally think it's probably a match if not slightly better than the uh, the Hornby um, special edition range and uh, it was quite a shock to put them next to each other and actually see the differences it was quite incredible um, which I'll put a picture on the end of this video to, uh, so you can have a look at and compare for your own eyes and actually see what you think so that brings us to the end of the uh, Duke of Gloucester uh, follow-up uh, model video. I uh, hope it gave you some ideas and I hope uh, it gave you uh, uh, a slight idea on what I've had to do to this model to uh, get it to a similar standard if not slightly better standard than the uh, special edition model uh, which was done by Hornby which was here yesterday uh, for some work as well. Um, I am hoping to write up a sort of uh, report or a walkthrough of what I have uh, done on this model uh, which will appear in the link box or, or comment box below this video. Uh, if anyone has any questions or uh, has any comments on this model now, it's been uh, redone, um, please leave them in the comments box below. Uh, I am hoping to try and still get some uh, additional details like drain clocks and steps on this model uh, when I do find them I will write it up on the uh, the walkthrough as well um, just to recap general costs I've spent on this model from um, purchase which was £66 pounds. I have spent just over £25 uh, £7 transfers uh, £12.55 I think it was for all the plates and etched numbers uh, pots of paint about 150, 160. Um, buffers are about, I think one set was 250, one was about 120. Um, one set was from eBay, and the other set was from Abigail Spares, which sadly is shutting down due to uh, poor health apparently, uh, which is very sad. They've been very helpful and useful over the years. Um, but I think uh, I'll do a write up and you can follow it through. As I mentioned, any questions, any comments, please leave in the comments box below. And hopefully you've enjoyed this video with the new and improved light. Sadly, the other one was a little bit dull and dark. I'm very sorry about that. Um, but hopefully now with some better lights, uh, you can now see the reviews a bit better. Next one will be the Duke Dog. I'll leave you with the uh, Loco running. Thanks for watching.